What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This is going to be part two of the vlog from the last video. If you haven't watched that, I'm gonna have some spoilers, so you should probably click on that video first. But today we are into day two of this tournament. We're not in the money yet, but we got some good vibes going as myself and Wolfgang made it to day two. So it's gonna be a fun time. We're pretty close to making the money after stacking a bunch of people. So hopefully we can keep that trend going. Before we get into the action though, we just wanna give a big thank you to everyone who's purchased one of the mystery luck boxes. It's incredible to see the support and honestly seeing all the excitement about the new merch drop and also the golden tickets. I'm super excited to announce those. So, so those mystery luck boxes won't be available on the site anymore after May 26th. They're only available for just one more week. After that, I'll be going through and announcing the, the winners and the people that have sent me a selfie that won their golden ticket. So if you wanna grab one, if you haven't grabbed one already, click the link down in the description below. It's only going to be available for one more week. And after that, once I get all the selfies in, I'll announce all of them. So if you do win a golden ticket, which would be 10 of you, you will be featured on the vlog in an upcoming one pretty soon. So send your best selfie. I'll be showcasing all a ton of you guys being $1,000 richer. So I'm excited for that and I just want to give a big thank you to everyone that's been excited about the drop, the new hoodies, the Rampage collection, whether it's the white on white one that you like or the white on red text. That's my personal favorite. Click the link down in the description below. Thank you so much for all the support. It means a ton. It means so much that you guys are really excited about this. But we've got a WSOP tournament to win. Let's make the money, make the final table, and then win. Those are the three steps. Pretty easy, right? Let's get into it. All right, restarts at 3.30. Are we gonna make it? Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I got this, I got this. You got it, we've got a lot of traffic here. Brutal. <sighs> okay, maybe okay. Uh, we'll just like have a photo finish running into the yeah, Sinesta. I'll Mr. Today for police yeah, we, we might need an escort here at this point. We've got a ring to win, people. Even after showing up a few minutes late after day two started, my chip stack actually went down from 260,000 to 210, but after a quick four hands of chipping up from the blinds again, I'm back at the normal stack and we are back in this tournament and I pick up king queen of spades in plus one. There is an ungun player who has about 160,000 in the stack, raises it up to 16,000. Here, in position of this player next to act, I make the call. And then the hijack who covers the entire table, three bets to 48,000. It folds all the way back around to me, and I'm a little confused here at what to do. Obviously, king queen is a really good hand that I want to see a flop with, but we aren't in the money yet, which gives some ICM complications. And from what I've seen from this player before, she's been playing pretty standard, so not going to be raising super wide. Anyways... It's 36,000 for me to call into a pot that will be over 120,000. Think I just have too much equity to fold. Let's win a big one here and gamble. I call and try to see a flop of five deuce deuce. Wow, not what I'm looking for. I check it over to her. She bets out 100,000 and yeah. I snap fold and I chip down here in this instance, down to a little over 200,000 in stack now. Onto the same level I go, I pick up ace six of clubs in the hijack. I raise it up to 18,000 and the player to my left goes all in in the cutoff, has 84,000 in stack and action folds to me, just a hair over 10 big blinds. And I don't love it, but given how short stacked this player is, I am just gonna have to gamble and hope I'm ahead. I make the call and I'm up against pocket eights. Not amazing as my six is not really an out anymore. So just hoping for an ace. The flop is amazing. Got every single draw imaginable and the turn brings me the nuts. Awesome. Great way to start the day as I stack this opponent, pick up some chips and I pick up the seventh bounty of this tournament. Now I've picked up $700 in just eliminating players from the field. Shift stack is now at 300,000 and shortly after that bust out, a few other people get busted. So now we are on the stone bubble. 22 players left, 21 get paid, and the drama is increasing when I pick up pocket queens under the gun. I raise it up to 22,000 here and action folds the big blind who makes the call. I cover this player, so that's pretty important here as we need one player to bust to be in the money. This player, I'm sure, is trying to do everything he can to not bust. Off to a flop of King Jack 7 to Diamonds. He checks it to me, and on a King High board here with Queens, I don't love it, but I think it's overall just a good spot to put my foot on the gas. I bet out 12,000, and for this good price, 
pretty small bet compared to the pot. He makes the call. Going to a turn which comes in ace now, so that is just disgusting. He checks again, and considering there's a lot of ICM pressure on the bubble of this tournament, I definitely want to err on the side of aggression and bet my range, although my specific hand really hates that. So I decide to fire out again, 27,000. And he makes the call again, so I'm certainly not loving it. Seeing him be sticky in this pot, I don't feel great about it, but when the river comes another ace, he checks for a third time, and I'm just thinking in my head whether he or not this player would fold a king if I go all in. He has about 140,000 in stack, and honestly, given the board has paired, it doesn't really seem too likely that he's going to fold if I jam here, so I decided to just give up with my queens. Really don't want to see him show a king, but even better, when I check back, he shows ace-jack. Yep. Avoided disaster here. Only has a full house. No, no problem here. He takes down the pot with a monster hand, and I'm just glad I didn't double him up. Moving on to the next level after break, I pick up pocket tens in the hijack. I only have about 220,000 in my stack now, and I raise it up to 27,000. The big blind decides on a call. I think he's a pretty solid player here on this table, and we're still on the stone bubble of this tournament. Off to a flop of king jack nine, two clubs. He checks it over to me, and this is just not a board I'm looking to see with my specific hand. I check this one back with a gut shot to a straight. The turn comes a board pairing king. He checks for a second time, and as played on the flop, I'm just trying to get the showdown and hopefully win this one. I check back, and the river comes another board pairing nine. Double paired board now on king jack nine, king nine. And he bets out 19,000. Whew. This is pretty annoying. At this point in the tournament here, and given how late we are, winning every pot is huge, but even more so, just making the right decision for every single pot is massive, because obviously a 19,000 chip bet is not huge compared to the size of the pot, but it is huge compared to my strategies in this tournament. I want to make correct folds and make correct calls, and this is a spot where I just expect to be beat so often, given the bet that he put out here. Very often, he's going to have a jack here or a nine. Obviously, you can discount all of the king x holdings you could have, but I think about it for a while, and... Look, I still think I have a really good bluff catcher, and folding is boring. I decide to stick in a call, given a really good price, and he shows us ace six of diamonds for only ace high. I win this pot, and this was a pretty small pot, but still massive for my tournament life. Chip up to about 340,000 now, and I'm feeling good after getting the chips pushed my way. All right, in the next hand, I pick up 9-8 offsuit in the big blind, and action folds to the small blind. Gonna have to battle it out blind versus blind here, still on the bubble here. He raises it up to 28,000, and I make the call with a playable hand. The flop comes queen 10-7 rainbow, so I flopped open-ended to the straight. Pretty good flop for my hand, and he bets out 19,000, smaller than his original pre-flop raise, so I'm in here. I make the call, hoping to bank a jack or six the turn comes the three of clubs, bringing two clubs on the board now, and he decides to size up to 42,000 at this point. Okay, I've got nine high. I don't feel great about it, but I'm still not going to go anywhere with a strong draw. If we bink, we certainly could win a massive one. Let's see a river, which comes the nine of hearts. So I end up with third pair, but not hitting the outs that I wanted to hit. He decides to bet out 73,000, and it's hard to imagine this player is going to be bluffing for three streets, especially this late in the tournament, and with the dynamics of one person busting to make the money. I snap fold, I'm out of there with just my pair of nines and give up. Chipping down to 175,000 now, it's been a roller coaster ride of a poker session so far. All right, given how short my stack is here, I'm in the cutoff with Jack-8 of diamonds. Everyone else behind me to act has a short stack as well. So when action folds to me, this is a good hand to just go all in given the blind stacks. I shove. The button with a smaller stack than me goes all in. Snap calls. And he just only has kings. Why wouldn't he have a premium? And I'm basically dead unless I see a ridiculous run out. Flop is no good, but the turn gives us a sweat. Come on, let's hit one of our outs. The river, no. 
Kills our dreams of winning and sucking out to break the bubble, sadly. He had 75,000 in a stack, and I give it to him. Now I am all of a sudden the short stack in this tournament on the bubble, down to 100,000. The very next shuffle, I pick up pocket fives in the hijack, and there's nothing to do here. No decision as I have under 10 big blinds in my stack. I go all in. And luckily, everyone folds. So I turned my 100K stack into 130K, picking up an extra 30,000 in my stack at the very least. All right, a uh, little update here right now. <laughs> it's been over an hour on the stone bubble with 22 players left. People are really short. Uh, there's been like five all-ins and the short stack has always won, including the jack eight hand. Just people are folding a lot. And of course they're gonna call with premiums. That didn't work out. And yeah, a ton of short stacks. All the short stacks have been winning so far, like at least more than five or six actually, but it's been an hour. I have 10 big blinds in a dream, 22 players left. You know, not looking likely to run it up, but we'll see. All right, this one's a crazy one. We could burst the bubble here and everyone could be in the money. We see a three-way all-in. It's ace-king versus queen-five versus queen-three. Really rooting for the bigger stack to win, and somehow, some way, the river queen gives us a suck out and we still haven't made the money yet still on the bubble this is the craziest and longest time i've ever been on the bubble no one's made the money and it's been a long time playing every single time the dealer deals us cards it's a massive sweat and this time blinds have increased so i'm even shorter stacked now and i pick up nine seven of clubs on the big blind action folds to the button player who puts in a min raise of thirty two thousand. The small blind folds, and I can't fold. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, but I certainly just want to make the money here. I decide on just a call, hoping to hit something, and got to close my eyes and pray, right? Good luck to us here on this flop. I don't have much behind. The flop comes jack, eight, six, two spades. Okay, I have an open-ended straight draw. I am going to have to commit my stack. I check it over to him, and he luckily checks it back, which makes me feel really good about my hand. We're going to a turn which comes a three. Sadly, not a card that improves us, and now I think I just have to bet here. Sometimes I can get nine high to win and have him bluff out better holdings. So I do that exactly. I bet out 23,000, and he doesn't look happy about it, which is nice. That's step one of this player folding. And step two of him folding is actually throwing into the muck, telling me he had a small pair. So probably had fours or fives or maybe even deuces. Regardless, not a good run out for him or flop. And uh, now my chip stacks up to 170,000 before going to the very next hand, ace king of clubs in the small blind. No one's busted yet. There's an ungun player who has a massive stack decides to limp in. And when everyone folds to me, you know what the deal is. I have about 10 big blinds and I'm committing my hand. It's a premium. I'm out of position. I jam. The big blind folds and now this under the gun player takes a long time to act, wants to think out her decisions and ends up folding an ace face up. While she folds, we have good news though. We are announced that we are now officially in the money. So finally, over an hour of play, we made it with a very short stack. I'm up to a hair over 200,000 and we're ready to go all in. Next interesting spot, I pick up queen five of hearts in the cutoff and action folds to me. I'm short stacked here, but I still think this is a good hand to raise and play being in position. So I raise it up to 32,000, just a min raise. Short stack in the big blind decides on making the call. Pretty solid player and could be defending wide. We're off to a flop, which is magical. Three, four, six, two hearts. Have the heart draw, have the open-ended straight draw, just absolute gin. And maybe even better news, he just open rips. Goes all in for maybe the size of the pot, and I couldn't call any faster. And we see amazing news. He has jack five of clubs. So basically, I'm free rolling this hand so hard. And when the turn comes a queen, that's it. I basically win the river seven of hearts. So he does get there with the straight, but I also improve to the flush and I knock out this player. It's the eighth bounty of the tournament and winning a massive hand like this is a great way to continue steamrolling through this tournament. After knocking that opponent out, I'm in a pretty tricky spot now with queen jack offsuit in the big blind. Action folds to the cutoff player who goes all in for 134,000. And everyone folds to me, leaving up the decision with queen jack offsuit. Counting out his stack, he has about eight big blinds, and in theory here, this is just a slam dunk call. 
but obviously not a comfortable call to make with queen jack off suit. I personally only have about 20 big blinds in my stack, so it's a pretty big decision for essentially the tournament life and how this tournament will go. Ultimately, I tried to talk myself into a fold somehow, but there's no way I'm folding. I'm just going to stick it in and hope for the best. I make the call and I see him up against king four of spades. So 40% chance to win. Let's hit it. The flop comes a jack. Turn another jack. Let's go. Bank City Population Us. Ninth person we've knocked out today. So $900 in my wallet just by eliminating players. And now all of a sudden my stack is just under 500,000. What a crazy come up after being super short stacked, almost getting knocked out. With 18 players left in the tournament final two tables, I see a familiar face. Wolfgang now sits on my table. Let's battle it out. This next hand here actually has some really weird dynamics. So to start, the player in the small blind is automatically all in. Didn't even have enough chips to fill in the small blind, so his bounty is also in play for this specific deal. And there's an only one player now who starts off the action, raising it up to 35,000 on 15 big blinds. And me... I pick up ace queen offsuit next to act. Yeah, this is a premium. This player to my right might be raising a little bit wide as well, considering that the small blinds bounty is in play. Basically $100 up for grabs on this specific hand, and I'm gonna three bet and raise it up to 90,000. Action folds to the cutoff player who jams for less than 90,000. Small blind is obviously already in here, and the Erlingen player thinks about committing his stack in the middle, but ultimately decides against it. He folds, and let's see what we're up against. The cutoff player who went all in has pocket nines. The small blind bounty that we really wanted to win has five deuce. This is a three-way all in, could set up a double KO and take down both of these players if we hit, but when pocket nines flops a set... Ah, oh, man. We're dead, unfortunately. It's hard to improve against a set here. And I couldn't scoop up these two bounties. My stack takes a hit, and the pocket nines player will take down the small blinds bounty and double up. The very next deal, I'm in another tricky spot with King Jack offsuit under the gun. I raise it up to 35,000 and get the plus one player to go all in. His stack is 140,000, so it's really annoying with how small this all in is. And when action folds to me, I've got a bigger stack, but nothing crazy. I decide to just flick in a call and gamble, hoping to flip, hoping to have 40%. And I'm up against Ace King. Totally dominated, but the flop comes meh. Turn Jack! Bink City for us again! Find a disgusting suck out while totally dominated. And that's how I pick up my 10th bounty. Now $1,000 have been racked up in profit, and we're steamrolling with the suckouts. Following that hand, we're in level 20 now, and I pick up pocket sevens in the cutoff. There's an underground player who decides to open jam, 240,000 in stack. It's not a whole lot, only 12 big blinds here, and with pocket sevens and a pair, I don't think this player is going to be jamming too wide here, but this is just like a pretty easy call, hoping that we're flipping. I stick it in there, and he shows pocket jacks. Oh, another premium that has us dominated, but the flop, the window is a seven! And then the dealer rolls a jack behind it. Set over set on the flop. I have one out to win by hitting quads, and I don't hit it. Lose a pretty darn big one, giving away more than half of my stack to this opponent. He finds a huge double up in a sick cooler on the flop there. And I'm tripping down. Next hand, though, it's exciting as Wolfgang is all in with King Queen versus Ace Queen, unfortunately. Gonna need to find a suck out to stay alive. And unfortunately, it doesn't come through. Doesn't find that king. And he's out in 13th place. Welcome to the Shove Fest. The Shove Fest continues as the Unleon player goes all in for 178,000 total. About nine big blinds and action folds around to me. I'm in the big blind with 10-9 of diamonds. Oh dear, what do I do here? We are so short stacked, and I think this is just a pretty miserable spot to be in once again. In theory, once again, facing these short stacks in a hand that has really good equity, I think calling with 10 high actually isn't so bad. I'm willing to do so, willing to gamble for the bounty, trying to take them down. So I'm in here, I make the call, and we're up against pocket fours. Oh no, if you watch this channel, you know Pocket Force can never lose an all-in. 
although this is a pretty good situation for 10-9 suited as it's a pure flip, and the flop gives him the nuts. Yep, just a set that becomes a full house. The legend of pocket fours lives on. Can't beat it. I'm down to 50,000 or 40,000 in stack now. So uh, yeah, basically two big blinds. My tournament life is at risk. In the following hand on the button, I peel pocket tens. There's a hijack player who raises it up to 40,000. I have 44,000 in stack and I'm insta all in. Pocket tens is actually much better than I could ever ask for given the spot here. And we get the big blind and hijack to call. So there's a chance to triple up here. That would be really awesome and fun. The flop comes queen, queen, eight. The big blind bets some amount where the hijack folds and I see the bad news. I'm up against ace, queen, and it's going to be hard to win this one. When the run out comes, it is GG's for me. Do not hit the two outer, and suddenly I am in 12th place and out of the tournament. 13th place. Oh, yeah, yeah, great. Lucky uh, 13. 12th place. Yay. All right. Uh, unfortunately, tournament did not go as well as planned. At the end of the day, it ended up being like a crazy shove fest. Everyone was super short and shallow, and when everyone's shallow, uh, it's better to be more aggressive and tie variance, and you just go all in like so, so often. So I wasn't able to close it up, but I did finish higher than, than Wolfgang, which is funny. Uh, both ended up in 13th and 12th place. I ended up cashing for a total of $2,100, including the placement of 12th place getting paid out, and then all the bounties that I acquired. So. All things considered, pretty good payout, nothing to complain about, but didn't get the ring. Obviously wanted to make the final table. That's where all the money's at in these tournaments. It's like, so you make so much money when you're like top three or top five. But uh, you know what, we'll settle for 12th place. At least we beat Wolfgang. But thank you so much for following along on this ride. Super fun tournament. And let me know what you guys think about these two part videos. I'll try my best to uh, not make them as much, but when the videos are so long, it, it, it's only so much I can do when it comes to making content. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the comments below. Thank you so much for the support and these hoodies. I'm a big fan of them. They're simple, they're sleek, and they look good with the, uh, the, the small little rampage on there. So click the link in the description below if you want more info on that. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.